differential centrifugation of subcellular organelles this is a part of the topic subcellular organelles and cell membrane what are cells so before we go into the definition of cells uh, let me inform you that cell was discovered by robert hooke in 1665 now we come to the definition of cell as you all know you've been reading it since your school days that a cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life and it has various cell organelles now what are these cell organelles a cell organelle or cell organelles are organized structures that are present in the cell now in order to study different cell organelles they have to be isolated so in brief i shall discuss with you the procedure of cell organelle isolation first we need to disrupt the tissue the disruption of tissue can be done by homogenization or grinding the disruption of tissue will release the cells and now the disruption of cell can be done by sonication or lysis the medium of uh, that is used is a buffer of 0.25 molarity made of sucrose uh, the ph of this buffer is 7.4 and also a lipid solvent tween 20 is used after this medium is added the differential centrifugation is carried out in which different organelles are separated at different centrifugal forces this fractionated differentiation of cell organelles was discovered by albert claud and he received the nobel prize in 1974 differential centrifuge now what is this differential centrifuge it is basically an equipment which separates certain subcellular organelles from whole cells for further analysis of specific cell organelles the tissue sample here in this case is first homogenized to break the cell membrane and mix up the cell contents this is known as the homogenate the homogenate is then subjected to repeated centrifugations each time removing the pellet and increasing the centrifugal force finally purification may be done through equilibrium sedimentation and the desired layer is extracted for further analysis so here this is a uh, diagrammatic expression this is a tissue homogenate low speed centrifugation it will separate the pellet and whole cells nuclei and cytoskeletons this can be removed and then the supernatant is subjected to medium this is the supernatant and this is the pellet so this supernatant can be taken in another test tube and it can be subjected to medium speed centrifugation which will contain mitochondria lysosome and peroxisomes in the pellet now again this supernatant is removed put in another tube and again subjected to centrifugation but this time the speed will be high here the pellet will contain microsomes and small vesicles once again the supernatant will be removed and it is subjected to high speed centrifugation and this time this will contain ribosomes viruses and some large molecules such as dna and proteins so separation of subcellular organelles can be done at different centrifugal forces let us see what are the centrifugal forces for different subcellular organelles so the nucleus needs a centrifugal force of 600 to 700 750 g for 10 minutes uh, for mitochondria larger amount of force is needed centrifugal force that is 10000 to 15000 g again for 10 minutes then for lysosomes it is 18000 to 25000 g again for 10 minutes and for golgi complex 
much higher centrifugal force is needed that is 35,000 to 40,000 G for 30 minutes and for microsomes which are among the smallest subcellular organelles the largest amount of centrifugal force is required that is 75,000 to 1 lakh G and for 100 minutes. Now the cytoplasm is nothing but the supernatant and each of these cell organelles have a marker enzyme present. So when they are isolated, if we want to confirm whether the exact cell organelle is isolated or not, we have to test for the marker enzyme. So the marker enzyme for mitochondrial fraction is ATP synthase. For lysosomal fraction, it is cathepsin. For Golgi complex, it is the enzyme galactosyl transferase. For microsomes, it is glucose 6-phosphatase. And for supernatant, it is lactate dehydrogenase, which will indicate the presence of cytoplasm. So these are the various markers for identifying the correct subcellular organelle. Now let us see the uh, different cell organelles who was it discovered by and what it is known as or nicknamed as. Plasma membrane was discovered by Nageli and Kramer in 1855, known nicknamed as gatekeeper, nucleus by Robert Brown in 1665, known as control center, nucleolus by Fontana in 1774, known as ribosome fac factory, Golgi body by Camellio Golgi in 1898 known as packing units, endoplasmic reticulum by Milio Verati in 1902 known as the conveyor belt, ribosomes was discovered by George A. Ballard in 1955 known as the protein factory, lysosomes was discovered by Christian D. Dewey in 1955 known as the suicide bags. And the perix, peroxisomes was also isolated by Christian D. Dewey in uh, 1955 and it is known as the microtubular system of the cell. The mitochondria was discovered by Albert von Kolliker and it is known as the powerhouse of the cell. So let us see the metabolic functions of subcellular organelles. These include uh, nucleus, DNA replication, transcription, endoplasmic reticulum, biosynthesis of proteins, glycoproteins, lipoproteins, drug metabolism, lysosomes carry out degradation of protein, carbohydrate, lipid and nucleotides, mitochondria uh, carries out electron transport chain, ATP generation, TCA cycle, beta oxidation of fatty acid, ketone body production, urea synthesis, heme synthesis, gluconeogenesis, pyrimidine synthesis partially. The cytosol uh, of the cell carries out various metabolic pathways such as protein synthesis, glycolysis, glycogen metabolism, HMP shunt, transamination, fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol synthesis, partially heme synthesis, urea synthesis, pyrimidine synthesis and purine synthesis. So all these pathways you will study throughout the year in detail. Thank you. So hope you liked the lecture. Keep listening. I'll be posting many more lectures this year.